Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading slash writing vlog. So it's currently Sunday the 15th, but it's in the evening. In fact, it's almost Monday. Uh, I'm still reading The Caves of Steel by Isaac Asimov. I'm enjoying it so far. And this is one of the books that Biggie picked out for me too. So uh, there will be a full review of that and there'll also be an update of that in my, my cat film picks my TBR video. I wish you'd film it as well, that'd be good. Biggie! <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, it's time for a little vloggy vloggy update. I have um, been up all night, as usual. I've also been actually been editing Charles Heathcote's secret project. as uh, He's one of my clients at the moment, so I've been working on that. Uh, I finished reading The Caves of Steel, so that was pretty good. I mean, I think I gave it like 3.5 out of 5. It was just fine. And I've moved on to Time's Eye by Arthur C. Clarke and Stephen Baxter. So this is pretty cool because Clarke is obviously like super influential in the science fiction field. And uh, Baxter co-wrote the Long Earth series with Terry Pratchett. I must admit, I'm not particularly enjoying this. It's kind of dragging. Um, but I am also reading through it pretty quickly, so that's good. Uh, there's There's a I mean, the blurb makes it sound so much better than it is, though. I mean, it's heading for like a three out of five, and the blurb sounds incredible. Let me read the blurb. 1885, the uh, Northwest Frontier, I guess. I don't know. 1885, the NW Frontier. Rudyard Kipling witnesses a bizarre encounter between the British Army and a piece of impossibly advanced technology, a hovering sphere, mysteriously watchful. And then, shockingly, a helicopter from 2037 comes over the hill. Meanwhile, elsewhere, scouts from the great horde of Genghis Khan find that familiar landmarks on the Great Steppe have disappeared, as if they had never been. And elsewhere again, the courtiers of Alexander the Great wait anxiously for news of the great king, who seems to have vanished. Nothing is as it was. The castaways in time must make an epic journey across a transformed world, a journey to a devastating truth. For if history is long, our future may be shorter than any of us have dreamed. Mankind's odyssey in time has begun. But yeah. I mean, I don't think I'd recommend it. It's not as good as I was hoping for, but, you know, I'll, I'll finish it soon. Yo, um, I realised there are three books, three, the three poetry books I didn't, like, give you a final update on. So I'm going to uh, basically give you a top line on each of them, read a poem and review them. So, Bethany Rivers, The Sea Refuses No River. Um, well, here, this is, like... I guess all, all about coming to terms with things. I'll read you Destination Overload. And that finally knowing this, you let go and discover that time is backwards and you were right all along and that Ithaca is not what you think it is. And although the pain sometimes freezes the horror in your mind, it is the journey that carries the meaning and not when you arrive. So we got, I gave this one like a 3.75 out of 5. Then we have The Woman with an Owl Tattoo by Anne Walsh Donnelly. So this is basically, uh, Donnelly was in her 40s, she got out, uh, she divorced her husband uh, and realised that, she, I can't remember whether she's bisexual or lesbian, but anyway, the, the, all the poems are kind of about that. So we have here, Coming Out to My Son. Mum, do you have a girlfriend, he asks, piercing me with his don't lie to me eyes. Yes. Is she just a friend with benefits? No. Is it just a phase you were going through? No. His acne cheek touches my forehead. His gangly arms wrap around my shoulders. Same as his toddler arms used to, but different. Thank you, I whisper. I was just fishing, he says. You thought you'd hook a goldfish. Instead, you caught a pike. No, I caught a whale. So yeah, I thought this was really good. She did a great job of kind of, I guess, communicating her thought process, her point of view, her emotions. Really well written as well. I don't like the cover much, but I gave it a four out of five. And then we have Bad Mummy Stay Mummy by Elizabeth Horan, which is basically all about postpartum depression. So I'll do here. It is my mind which does this. Is it my fault to be so defective? Unwilling keeper of the key to a skull so sickened? Like a bloated sponge riddled in bacteria? No vaccine, no hieroglyphs. I pretend the disease is a friend. I tell it, you may go on holiday, depart with your tumour, friends and all your tricks and gags. Slung low in overly black plastic bags, rock laden, ready for the drown. Is it my fault she won't go? Stubborn matron toes the line, bakes better biscuits, corresponds more frequently than I. Makes young doctors angry, gets under their skin, but strangely they lust for her and covet her gangrene. I cannot rid of something so heinous. She walks within my legs, piggybacks my brain, whispers, bad mother. Pathetic failure, you are ruining them daily. You know best to go, best to go, best to leave them alone. Is it my fault this wine, this off-key music is in my mind? And I thought this was fantastic as well. Again, similar to the last book, it just did a really good job of communicating, um, you know, that sense of postpartum depression, I guess. I gave this a four out of five. All right. Hello. 
Um, there is very little for me to update really, except, oh no, I've got Biggie Fluff here because he was sitting next to me. I've finished reading Time's Eye and I'm now about to start reading Catch Me If You Can by Frank W. Abagnale with Stan Redding. Or at least I'm going to give it a go, because I gave it a go before and wasn't really enjoying it and almost DNF'd it. But I'm like running out of books to read now, so I do actually need to crack on with it. So my new system now is I try and read a book and if I like it, I stick with it. If I don't, it goes through to my like bedside bedtime books pile and basically that means I have to read it in bed and uh, yeah eventually if that pile gets too ridiculous I'm gonna have to do some some unhauling but yeah that's where I'm at I've also just finished filming all of my videos that I wanted to film so I'm in a good place it's 16 50 so what 10 to 5 in the early evening uh, I've done lots of work I haven't been I haven't slept for like 18 19 hours something like that because my sleeping pattern is knackered but um, yeah I'm just gonna finish up a few bits of work do a little bit of editing then I might play guitar for a little bit and then probably about 8 p.m. I'm just going to get into bed, put the snooker on, and read my Alan Turing biography until I fall asleep. So yeah, cool. That's Lenny Kravitz, so don't go over till it's over. Thank you, Claire Wilkins Sound. And with me is Dane Cobain. Do you want to talk about your, your um, cooking channel on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, I can do. So, well, I, I suppose I can promote my Instagram as well. So, well, we're, we're, both, we're, we're both vegan, as uh, some listeners know. Uh, because we've talked about vegan cookbooks in the past actually as well so and um, yeah I, I mean I'm a, a bit of a YouTube addict I get like a big chunk of my well basically my entertainment comes from Spotify YouTube and Netflix and that's that's pretty much it and when my internet goes down I listen to vinyls but um, so yeah I, I watch a lot of YouTube and that's you know, I got into making YouTube videos because I was making videos about books and yeah. there's a, a community sort of called BookTube. Um, but really on YouTube, there are communities for everything. There are sub communities for, I mean, I mean beauty is a big one, beauty and fashion, yeah. gaming. But I've seen like there's a knitting community yeah. where people share designs and wow. updates and stuff. It's actually, so there's one person I watch who does reading and knitting on their channel. And so I've kind of ended up watching the knitting and I'm like, this is amazing. Look I at that. that. That's probably quite therapeutic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so, and then another big, you know, there's a big food community and within that there's a big vegan community. So, um, so I've had a, an Instagram just called Dane's Vegan Journey where I just post pictures of my food basically. Mm -hmm. So I thought, why not post uh, videos of my food as well? So, so yeah, I started doing that. My, my plan is to do like some recipes and stuff, but mostly because I was saying to you just, just, uh, just a, a moment ago that it requires a totally different sort of style of filming and editing, I guess, and I'm by no means an expert, but when I'm talking about books, I can set up a camera on a tripod and just sit there and talk mm. and it's fine. Whereas when you're in the kitchen, you know, you want to have maybe close-ups on different things, you want to move the camera around. Uh, it, even things as well like, it sort of seems as though you can't make a video with some food without actually trying the food at the end, which is fine, but then you have to film yourself eating, which is weird, and like, I think with because mm. yeah yeah exactly and make all the right noises and be like oh, maybe a bit more seasoning and you yeah. know but um because because yeah, yeah, yeah well like, it's yeah. interesting because I, I I mean by the time that I got into the booktube community making videos I'd made videos here and there before and I was kind of okay in front of a camera I mean I play open mic nights and stuff so mm. I'm kind of used to that like little added element of pressure I guess but most people who start booktube they'll just be random people who just want to talk about books and they're maybe filming on their phone and everyone always says that's the hardest thing is just talk, sitting down and talking to a camera because yeah. it's so alien mm -hmm. um, but I've kind of got that bit fine but sitting down in front of a camera and eating yeah <laughs> definitely weird and you've got like a light on you shining on you as well yeah. and you're just like this is so strange and but um, yeah I mean it's, it's, it's a fun little thing to do as well and you know, it's it's quite nice because actually it helps you to remember things that you've cooked as well. So I'll be like, that. What was that really nice thing I made? It's Friday, so it'll be the twentieth because last Friday was the thirteenth. I'm very tired. It's currently seven forty a.m. I have not slept as usual. Uh, well, I got up at like two p.m. yesterday, so I'm gonna try and power through as much as I can today. Get some work done and hopefully get back to a normal sleeping schedule. I do have some stuff to update you on, so I don't know what the last thing I would have filmed was. Well, I went to the art center yesterday. Oh, yeah, that, that was it, so I didn't film that, but I was at the art center yesterday helping to paint the gentleman's toilets. So that was, and it was quite fun actually, because, you know, just chatting to people and hanging out. Um, and then, like, quite a sense of accomplishment when, when that was done. And I went straight from there onto the radio to talk books. 
Uh, other than that, this week I've just been being productive. Uh, done a lot of editing, a little bit of filming. I need to update you on the books I've read as well. So I read uh, Catch Me If You Can by Frank Abagnale and Stan Redding. I actually put this off for quite a long time and I don't really know why because I did really enjoy it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. I mean, if you've seen the movie or you've heard of the movie, you roughly know what it's about. It's like the non-fiction account of Frank Abagnale, a, a con man basically. And you will be amazed by... Not only like the lengths that he went to and the thought that he put into his cons, but also how gullible people were. So uh, yeah, definitely recommend. I put this off for quite a while and then I regret it now because I enjoyed it. Okay, then we have uh, some Bizarro. So we have Mandy DeSandra, Gay Zombie Sluts in Key West. Uh, this is pretty much exactly as it sounds. It's a zombie novel where the cure is for uh, a couple of people to basically let zombies have anal sex with them. It's about 35 pages long, so it's not super long, but it was very humorous. It wasn't as good as uh, Fox News Fuckfest, uh, DeSandra's other book, but I gave this a 3.5 out of 5, and uh, will have reviewed this in a video, which I will link to if it's around. If not, I won't. Then I read Paroxysm of Fear by Todd Wittenmeyer, so this is Todd the Librarian, and this was actually sent to me by Time for Books. And uh, this is like a collection of short stories. The formatting's a little off in it, but Todd knows that. Um, actually, like, spe like spelling and grammar are mistakes-wise. The only thing was is like uh, the misuse of like apostrophes and it's a few times. But I actually read some Ollie Jacobs I'll talk about in a minute, which was much worse as a, as a culprit. But, um, you know, I still enjoyed it. I gave this like a 3.5 out of 5, I think. And I actually preferred these to Todd's longer form stuff. And I think the reason is, is because I really like the ideas that he has. And I think um, short fiction allows him to get through more ideas in the same amount of space, if that makes sense. So yeah. And uh, she also sent me Ask Goblins of Auschwitz by Cameron Pierce. So this is another bizarro novel. I think she actually got sent this by accident when she ordered something else. And she was like, oh, I thought you might enjoy it. And I did enjoy it. I gave this a 4 out of 5. No, 3.75 out of 5. And this is basically like space ass goblins. Here you can see them on the front. And they kidnap a bunch of kids from like Kidland or something. Yeah, and uh, it follows these two prisoners who are like conjoined twins. And yeah, it's basically like... What's weird is that because it's obviously inspired by Auschwitz in the Holocaust, there are actually like genuinely touching moments in it. But at the same time, it is also about ass goblins. So yeah, very strange read, but I'm glad I, I'm glad that she, she sent it to me and that I picked it up. I gave it, uh, yeah, like I say, a 3.75 out of 5. Then we have Loud Silence by Hedy Mix. So again, I'll link below to where you can read more about this. Basically, they sent me uh, a box that I did like an unboxing of. And uh, each, you know, edition they have or whatever, they have like a theme representing like underrepresented minorities, whether it's LGBTQ plus or whatever, or in this one it is uh, deafness and the deaf community. So this is like some short fiction, it's also got some essays in there as well, and actually I enjoyed the essays more I think. Now I don't know if you can actually get a hold of this, I mean it has an ISBN, but I don't know if you can get a copy of this just by itself, I don't know whether it's only available through the, the, the subscription box. But I was really impressed with it and think they did a good job of putting this together. And as I say, the essays in particular are really good, and I'll be doing a full review of this. Then I read Wrapped Up in Nothing by Ollie Jacobs, so this is a Mr. Blank book, and basically like Mr. Blank, he's like got half of his face missing, he's got no tongue, uh, so he can't speak, he writes things on like notepads and text messages and stuff. Uh, and it's like this almost, almost reminiscent of the Gunslinger books by Stephen King, the Dark Tower books, where like, it's in this like strange world. And basically he's off on a mission. He doesn't know who he is or where he came from or how he got there or anything So he's investigating all of that and uh, yeah, it's Ollie Jacobs. I really enjoy his stuff I think in this one is one of his more recent ones and you can sort of see his style has come along And it's also like the first in a series so it's potentially a good place to start if you're interested uh, and that brings me on to the two I'm currently reading, but I'm close enough to the end of both of them that I can review them. So one of them is Asimov's Mysteries by Isaac Asimov. And uh, basically, I got halfway through this. It's a short story collection of like science fiction mysteries, I guess. And I got halfway through it and then lost my copy. So I ordered another copy and it arrived. And actually this one is better than my other copy because it's like 50 pages longer because it uses larger print. So I'm like really whizzing through it now. And yeah. I mean, The Observer said it's the first time I've seen science fiction used in this way, and that's pretty accurate. There's also one story in this which the entire story is just the setup for a pun, 
Um, which, but I don't want to. I don't want to give that away too much. But yeah, I've really enjoyed reading this. I'd give this like three point five out of five, I reckon, because with as with any short story collection, some of the stories are better than others. But overall, definitely, uh, definitely enjoying it. And then I've also been reading Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys. So this is a Penguin modern classic. I read some of Jean Rhys when I did my uh, Penguin uh, mini moderns when I did the box set of those. And I quite enjoyed her stuff then, but this one hasn't really been gripping me. So it's like, a, yeah, it's inspired by Jane Eyre, which I haven't read, which probably doesn't help. I do actually, one thing I do like is that because it's set in Jamaica, there's a lot of Jamaican patois. And I think that's really interesting to read. And actually, it's probably one of the most interesting things of the novel. But it's like, I enjoy reading the patois, but I'm not necessarily interested in what they're actually talking about. So, yeah, at this point, I'm just reading to finish it off. I had actually had it as a bedtime book, and I'm, I've so nearly finished it now that I just want to finish going through it. And, um, yeah, I'm trying to get my... I'm still trying to get my list of books I'm currently reading down. And I got down to 140 and then ordered some books and some books got sent to me. So I think if I finish those two, I'm down to like 145. And then I need to choose my next book. I don't know. I don't really want to read any of these. This is the problem. Some Dorothy L. Sayers down there. That might be nice. How, how small is the print? In? Oh, this, the print in this is acceptable. Look, the print is an acceptable size. And it's 208 pages. So yeah, we're going to read Whose Body by Dorothy L. Sayers after that, which I believe is a Lord Peter Whimsy mystery. I've never read any Dorothy L. Sayers before. So pretty stoked about that, and I think I can bash this out in like a day or so. Like, look at this, look at the size of the print. Oh, it's heaven. All right, anyway. All right, I made it to 10, 10 a.m. I've just finished all my filming. I also finished reading those books as well. So now I'm cracking on with Whose Body by Dorothy L. Sayers. Hey, pretty tired now though. It is 10, 10 a.m. If I could stay up for another 12 hours, that'd be good. Hello, I did get some sleep in the end. Then I woke up, then I had uh, a bit of a moment. So I wrote a song and here's the song I wrote. And it's, I don't, actually it doesn't have a title. Yo, wow, my hair looks mental. I kind of like it though. Uh, I'm pretty tired again. It is currently 5 to 10 in the morning. I tried to sleep last night. It didn't happen. Uh, I have a friend whose wife, well, she's kind of my friend too, So, but I know her through him. His wife, it was her birthday the other day, so we're, they're having some drinks at about 3 p.m. in town. So I might go along to that because then I can nip to the post office. Shout out to Graeme Sillers who has a YouTube channel, a booktube channel and has bought a copy of Driven. Thank you very much Graeme, appreciate it. It's on its way. Once I go to town, well the plan is to go to town, post that thing and then go for a few drinks at a place called The Snug. In the meantime I have some books to update you on. So in the post yesterday I got Beer Makes Daddy Strong by Andy Riley. So this is like, he's, this, this is the uh, Great Lies to Tell Small Kids series. So it's got like gardening, mummy plants stuff, daddy chops it back. Uh, various little cartoons and stuff. I mean, I'm not a dad. So, you know, the interesting article next to the breasts, that's what daddy's looking at. I mean, I was like on the side of the uh, No More Page 3 campaign, which I think stopped. Because there used to just be boobs in British tabloid newspapers, as you do. Um, I gave this a three out, three out of five. This is kind of like a uh, gimmicky book. It'd be a good one for like Father's Day or, or something like that. I actually picked this up because Andy Riley also did the Bunny Suicides books, and I enjoyed those, so I wanted to check this out. But yeah, it was a quick little read. As is like all of the books I'm picking up at the moment are all quick reads, kind of deliberately, because I'm trying to get back below 140 on my currently reading pile, and I'm on. 
about to, I'm about to hit 143, and then in the post I've got a small graphic novel coming and another children's book to take me down to 141, and I want to be below 140, so keep, keep on keeping on. Uh, after that I read Whose Body by Dorothy L. Sayers. This is the first Peter Whimsy book, and like, I'm trying to figure out where to go, where the, where the light isn't mental. And um, Dorothy L. Sayers is like, obviously a very well respected author. Uh, I was had high hopes going into this. I, th I think I was expecting like another Agatha Christie and for me it was very much more like a another um, P.G. Woodhouse whose stuff I didn't like because I didn't really like this either and considering this is like the first one. Well I didn't like the character of Lord Peter Whimsey and so that's like reading Agatha Christie and not liking Poirot except in my review for my book blog I noted I don't particularly like Poirot. I prefer Miss Marple so I don't know if that's an accurate comparison. But yeah it was just dull to be honest. It was like it was okay there just wasn't anything going for it. There were no highlights, there were no lowlights. Actually, there were quite a few um, spelling mistakes in my version for some reason. But yeah, it was just okay, and I wouldn't go out of my way to recommend it to anyone. So that brings me on to what I'm currently reading, which is Beat Poets, and this is edited by Carmilla Ciararu. Ciararu. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. And this is just a collection of beat poetry. I mean, I'm a big fan of the beats, so we've got like Ginsberg, Kerouac, Gregory Corso's in here, Lawrence Full and Getty. Quite a few women in here as well, which I was glad. Frank O'Hara is in here as well, whose stuff I liked. So, um, yeah, it was a really cool little edition. It's a little pocket sized edition, and it probably take you, what, half an hour to an hour to read through this. Maybe longer if you want to read them out, out loud. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Four out of five. And so that brings me on to what I'm going to read next. So next up, I'm going to read From the Mouth of the Whale by Sean, who is an Icelandic author. And part of the reason for that is if you, if you look at it here, look, there's not too much. The pages aren't too... I mean, they are dense because they're like super long par paragraphs that go on for like three pages. But I've read and enjoyed Sean before, so I'm hoping for the best from this one. And it's only, what, 270 pages. So it's on the shortish side. And yet, I think I worked out if I can finish reading this, which I basically have finished reading, I've got like 30 pages to go, and then if I finish reading Sean, and then those two books that are coming in the post, I'm on 140. But I want to go to 139, so I need to read another one after that. And also, it's a Saturday, so those books might come in the post later, but if they don't, the next opportunity for them to arrive is Monday. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. I'm mega tired, man. I'm mega tired. Oh. This video is worse.
is a preference for the habitual voyeur of what is known as a morning suit can be avoided if you take the route straight through what is known as John's got Brewer's group, he gets intimidated by the dirty pigeons They love a bit of it Who's that gun lord marching? You should put down on your poor life, mate Get some exercise We're just chilling, aren't we, Biggie, and watching Surviving R. Kelly? Yeah. Very nice. Hello! It is Tuesday. Tuesday the 24th of September. Uh, to update you guys, I guess you saw uh, I went to the Rose and Crown on Sunday, which is... Well, I suppose, yeah, let's let's go back to over the weekend. So, on the Saturday, I went to Ollie Jacobs' house, uh, who is an indie author I've talked about on the channel before. Went to hang out with his dog, Lady, which was very fun. Uh, it was his wife's birthday, so I had a few drinks there. Then just headed home. Uh, played Forsaken, which is a computer game that I made and filmed a little Let's Play of it. Hello, Big E. Uh, so yeah, that was good. And then on Sunday, Sunday afternoon, I went to the Rose and Crown, which is this pub just around the corner, for their like uh, acoustic jam. So we played some tunes. So uh, um, well, Jordana was there, and the guy she's seen called Chris. He played Cajon uh, with me and Dave, and then a guy called uh, Alex played. Uh, you got a little? What are you looking at, Cat? A guy called Alex played bass. So we did some some tunes, which you saw. And then yeah, that was about it. And then Monday, I was so hungover. I'm actually still not great today. It's one of those two-day hangovers. But I do have some reading to report report on. So I finished reading *From the Mouth of the Whale* by Sean. Um, this is very odd. It's like historical fiction, literary fiction, magical realism, uh, all rolled into one, I guess. But with a very like classic feel as well. I mean, I'll read you the blurb. The year is 1635. Iceland is a world darkened by superstition, poverty and cruelty. Men of science marvel over a unicorn's horn. Poor folk worship the virgin in secret and both books and men are burnt. Jonas Parmesan, a poet and self-taught healer, has been condemned to exile for heretical conduct, having fallen foul of the local magistrate. Banished to a barren island, Jonas recalls his exorcism of a walking corpse on the remote Snafjol coast, the frenzied massacre of innocent Basque whalers at the hands of local villagers, and the deaths of three of his children. From the mouth of the whale is a magical evocation of an enlightened mind and a vanished age. And yeah, it's just stunning, really. I mean, this guy's Sean. He's known for, like, collaborating with Bjork. And you can kind of see why with this, because it's nuts. Um, it's one of those books where I can't really tell you what happened during it. But what I remember is the way it made me feel, which was just impressed, really. Um, it was very absorbing. Like, you felt you were, like, you're really there. I mean, part of that might be because it's quite dense. So you can see here, like, how dense the paragraphs are. There are times when it's, like, three or four pages of just the same paragraph. Like, here's one I've just flicked in at random. There's no... That's all one paragraph there. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I gave it, like, a 3.5 out of 5, and I'll be reading more Sean in the future. And so that brings me on to my current read, which is Prediction Machines by A.J. Agrawal, Joshua Gans, and Avi Goldfarb. The Simple Economics of Artificial Intelligence. And uh, this is non-fiction. It's by Harvard Business Review Press, I believe. Uh, yeah. And I'm probably coming on for halfway through it. I've made a good dent. I probably won't finish it this evening, but I should imagine I'll finish this tomorrow. And I've, so far, I'm finding it really interesting. I mean, it's one of those where I have a, a client as well, uh, Emmanuel Fombu, MD, who I do some ghostwriting for. And um, he's just been trying to get me to read this book for ages. So I finally am. But yeah, that seems like a good place to end this week's vlog. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.